Syrians are taking huge risks trying to get to Europe. If you're in the hands of people smugglers, you have little choice. Refugees are throwing themselves into the sea in a desperate bid to get picked up and then dumped in Greece. How much longer are you going to keep these people out here in the cold and the rain? And even if they make it, they're likely to end up in prison. The escape from Syria begins with refugees crossing the border here into Turkey. They're tired and angry. They're warned that accommodation in refugee camps is limited. A fight breaks out among the men. A woman vents her frustration on us. Why, why you take photo? Two, 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 two years you take photo. What are you doing? Nothing. Nothing. The, the people are dying. Nothing. The refugee camp on the border has a depressing look of permanence about it. Over the last two years, two million Syrians have fled their country. And with no end to the conflict in sight, they can be forgiven for wanting to rebuild their lives elsewhere. Today the camp is full, and those turned away set off on foot. Some will join the tens of thousands of Syrians in Turkey who are trying to make it on their own here. I went to meet the Ramo family at night after the workers among them got home. The family escaped from northern Syria three months ago. Forty-one-year-old Mohammed, a tailor back home, has been told he's too old to find work. Two of the teenagers have jobs in a shoe warehouse. The work's okay, says 13-year-old Ahmed, but the pay is bad and there's no food for the family tonight. Why don't they move on? Those with money don't stay long. They leave the border area with their hopes pinned on the countries of the European Union. They go over a thousand kilometers northwest to Istanbul. The ancient crossroads between east and west, and the gateway to Europe through Greece. 
But the Greeks are unwilling to give visas or asylum to Syrian refugees who arrive at official border crossings. It's here that the Syrian refugees must link up with the gangs of people smugglers operating in the city. They then organize a journey that will be expensive and will involve huge risk. They start in a district of the city where they'll find people they can do business with. Like Omar, a driver. They go west to meet up with smugglers in the Turkish border town of Erdine. from where they cross the river Evros into Greece. The river is over a kilometer wide in places with dangerous currents. The smugglers push them in rubber boats from the Turkish side and then they're on their own, usually at night. The Greek police gave us these pictures to illustrate how they rescue refugees who get into trouble. But one family told us a very different story. How, to their horror, when they got to the Greek side, the police separated them and pushed them in a boat back to Turkey. Many don't make it. On a hill on the Greek side, there's a cemetery. 400 freshly dug individual graves of those who have drowned in the attempt to cross the River Evros over the last two years. Here, at the end, they find friends in Greece, among local Greek Muslims, who bury them. The Greek police also publish pictures showing their search for bodies in the river. They deny pushing the refugees back. But then, why do so many drown? και τέτοιες περιπτώσεις όπου η προσπάθειά τους ε, να περάσουν ε, πνίγηκαν ε, διότι τα νερά εκεί είναι ορμητικά, πρέπει να τα είδατε κι εσείς αλλά κανένα τέτοιο κρούσμα ε, με πολλούς πνιγούς δεν είχαμε αφού του ξεκίνησε η επιχείρηση διότι εμείς είμαστε επιχειρούμε επί της σκήτης του ποταμού και προβαίνουμε άμεσα σε διάσωση αυτών που τυχόν κινδυνεύουν προσπαθώντας να περάσουν το ποτάμι. Operation Shield is designed to defend the borders of Greece, Europe's front line against illegal immigration. The Greek police are helped by other European forces. Germans, Dutch, Latvians and Romanians patrol the river area today. Where the border extends beyond the river, there's now a formidable fence. Recently finished, 
and designed to close a crossing once used by 90% of illegal immigrants entering Europe. A year ago, this was the preferred route for Syrians trying to get into Greece. Syrians are now having to choose another and more dangerous way. Starting from Istanbul again, the refugees are more likely today to be taken by road to Turkey's western Mediterranean coast, from where the border with Greece runs along the Aegean Sea. It's just 12 kilometers to the nearest Greek island, Lesbos. An easy and pleasant ferry ride if you have money, a visa, or European passport. Which is why no Syrians joined me on the journey. Back in Izmir, the smugglers insist that the Syrians begin their crossing from the Turkish side at night. <laughs> Desim is head of the Kurdish community in Izmir. He was at the scene as the bodies of 66 drowned Kurdish Syrians were brought ashore. The drownings which took place in September last year are among many. <laughs> Just a few weeks ago, Adib received a call from the Coast Guard at Lesbos to come and collect the bodies and belongings of his brother's family. His brother, sister-in-law and three children drowned. The body of the youngest child hasn't been recovered. And Omar, and this. It was while Adib was searching for his family that he met survivors of boats that had gone down at the same time. Refugee support organizations are getting many reports of boats being deliberately pushed back from Greek into Turkish waters, a charge the Greek Coast Guard deny. But these pictures show refugees behaving recklessly. They say the only way they can stop the Coast Guard from pushing them back is to scuttle their boats and hope they're rescued from the sea. Whatever is going on in the Aegean, it is certain that hundreds have drowned. Here too, the frontiers of Greece are patrolled by the pan-European border police known as Frontex. I asked the Romanian crew whether they pushed boats carrying refugees back to Turkey. It's part of the uh, Frontex policy not to disclose the um, um, should I call it the uh, modus operandi of uh, the fear? He clearly didn't want to talk about it, preferring instead to tell me how earlier they'd found a group of refugees who'd become stranded on an uninhabited island. Uh, they built a fire, uh, and we saw that on uh, the thermal vision camera. We approached, we used the searchlight to determine the number and uh, their state. Uh, 
as I saw in the morning, they weren't in a bad shape, they uh, were dry. One of the Syrian refugees who lit the fire that morning takes up the story. Eventually, the Greek Coast Guard collected 40 refugees from the island, 25 Afghans and 15 Syrians. They're picking up dozens every day, and as the summer goes on, and with no end to the killing in Syria, there'll be many more. These Syrians are Christians, who fled in fear of rising Muslim extremism. Some still have family back home and don't want to be identified. They've each paid 1,500 euros to the smugglers to get this far. But they want to go to the countries of Northern Europe and are bitter that they're not being helped. Volunteer doctors check the new arrivals. There have been recent cases of TB. Bizarrely, a consignment of shoes arrives. But the Syrians and Afghans have been here for 12 hours now, and neither food nor shelter has been offered by the authorities. Why, when they knew they were coming, is everyone so unprepared? I cannot find any explanation. There is no reason why we are so unprepared, so confused, uh, why we are not doing anything for them. I think it's a political choice to be like this. I ate two potatoes from you. The authorities are trying to deter future refugees from coming to Greece. But in the meantime, Effie Latsudi, who coordinates local volunteers, says those who are here must be fed. And she collects provisions from a local soup kitchen. Today you see 40 people. It can be 80 people. It can be 100 people. What can we do? Some weeks ago we had 86 people, uh, women, children, uh, pregnant women, and they were all sleeping there under the rain, and we were trying to feed them there. They get their first meal in 24 hours, but there's still no news of shelter. Heavy rain is forecast, and most of the space in the one van provided is taken by families with children. The new arrivals who've been soaked at sea now get a second drenching. I go and ask the Coast Guard what's going on. How much longer are you going to keep these people out here in the cold and the rain? I can't do something. You must talk to the officer. Well, have you told them what distress these people are in? And it's going to get colder as the coming. night progresses. They are coming. Someone is coming to help? The officer, the officer. Good. They so, so they're going to take them away for the night? Yes? It's possible to it's going somewhere to sleep. But no one comes to collect them and they settle down on the quay for an uncomfortable night. They're locked in just meters from the bright lights of Lesbos. One of the most popular holiday islands in Greece.
Refugees have been held for weeks on the island, but scenes like these, witnessed by tourists, have brought harsh criticism from the United Nations and the European Union. As a result, there have been some changes. Two days after arriving, the Afghans have to stay, but the Syrians are now allowed onto the ferry for an overnight crossing to the mainland. From where they go on to Athens. But for the majority who make it this far, the road ends in the Greek capital, where things can get worse. Golden Dawn, a party with an anti-immigration agenda, is the third most popular in Greece today, with support among a people reduced by austerity measures and with little sympathy for outsiders who need help. The party has been blamed for recent attacks on immigrants. After two attempts, Salwa and her family did get across the river to Athens, but now face another threat. Like all Syrians, they don't want to stay. They gave all the money they had left to another smuggler for fake passports to get them to Sweden to apply for asylum there. The family is now stranded in a one-room apartment paid for by the Syrian community here. The older boys don't dare leave it for fear of arrest. All those found entering the country illegally are detained. Kaniwa had made it across the river Everos, barely escaping with his life, and was sitting in a cafe in Athens when he was picked up and taken to prison. He was held for weeks in prison and then transferred to a detention camp. Thousands of Syrians have been arrested and detained in Greece over the last two years. Only two Syrians out of hundreds who've applied have been given asylum. A European Commission report recently said that the conditions endured by Syrians in Greece are unacceptable. The Greek government says they are appropriate. Είτε δημιουργήθηκαν κέντρα προαναχρωσιακά κέντρα, κέντρα πρώτης υποδοχής, νέα υπηρεσία ασύλου, αρχή προσφυγών. Διαχειριζόμαστε με τον καλύτερο και ανθρωπίνως δυνατό τρόπο όλους αυτούς οι οποίοι έρχονται και προσπαθούμε με ανθρώπινο τρόπο να τους πείσουμε ότι ξέρετε εδώ στην Ελλάδα να περάσουμε το μήνυμα δηλαδή ότι μην έρχεστε στην Ελλάδα διότι και η Ελλάδα περνάει μία κρίση, αλλά ούτε θα επιτρέψουμε να πάνε σε άλλες χώρες της Ευρώπης που η επιθυμία των περισσότερων είναι να πάνε εκεί. A constant plea I heard from Syrians here to the Greeks is that if you won't help us, at least let us move on. Μέθυνα με τελεί ίνσαν, μεν να ζανε πελίσι σάρφι. Νέχνε αραβνα μεν βασσάρ ελάσαδο μεν ζουλμο μεν σιλαμλο μπαλαδνα. Νέτζε λαόν ελάλαμ χον καμάν αμαλούνα πεσσαί the 
يعلمونا اللغة نحن جينا لهون فتنا على السجون It is the misfortune for those Syrians who want to rebuild their lives in the European Union and beyond that the first country they stumble into is Greece. And yet, few other countries are offering these people the opportunity either.